And I just noticed I was saying less and less and less. Mm -hmm. And then I realised that there was the pronoun thing going on. And no matter how much you try with and With the people that you... D with, with these... With dan two dancers... <coughs> the non-binary um, dancers. One male-bodied, one female-bodied, uh, that both identified as non-binary. And, and when we started, I was like, cool. I, I mean, I am probably would consider myself pretty non-binary. I mean, you know, crack on, don't mind, not a problem. Um, I identify as Swedish. Well, exactly. And, and, and they auditioned for sex-based roles. Right. They had characters. They were male did they, female. When they auditioned, did they did, were you aware of the fact that of, of what that how into the into the vocal ideology they were and, and no, I wasn't no. aware, and I, I I just so they waited till they got the job before they made it difficult. For you. Yeah, yeah, and they waited until I made a mistake. And to what? Bring so, it up. but you you're using sort of negative language against yourself. What mistake did you make? Uh, uh, well, we, I taught, was teaching ballet. And I, because I kind of wanted them to get their technical level up a little bit higher. And I noticed, like, when I was sort of saying, well, you know, there, there is there is an instruction in ballet, and you know, like, point your feet or yeah. straight your knees, you know. And there's a, you know, that can sound like a command, but it's actually there's a technical reason behind that as well. Like, it protects your knees, it looks more aesthetic, and you know, I know exactly how to do it with your body, how to make it look right. And there was a sense of like, oh who's this, you know, and I was like, well, these guys are only just straight out of college. I've been dancing on big stages, you know, for 25 years. I, I know one or two things about this. Yeah. Um, it's a it, there's a, you can't be good at anything in the arts. Like, as an actor, for me, I, it was voice. I turned up and they were like, you can't, you're never going to be able to get through a run of a play if you use your voice in the way that you're using it for 12 weeks, you'll lose your voice after. So there are technical aspects to what we do that I are know. crucial. And I love that about it because mm. that's the hard work. That's the discipline. It's the craftsmanship that makes you not just like, oh, I can do anything. It's that day in, day out, daily rigor, battle with yourself, battle with your mind to hone and hone and hone and hone and hone your technique. There's never one plie I do or one ton do without thinking, come on, can you improve that? Or I never feel like I've got it. Your body changes all it the time. It holds you so you're then free to express, doesn't exactly. it? So you, you rest on your technique and then you're free to, then you become an individual. That's right. Which is part of what I think maybe the problem is. Well, um, this is that's a really <clears> good point because I, I, I mean, I, I still perform. I was performing right up till uh, July last year, doing a, a big solo show all on my own. And, oh, the daily rigours and pain. You sometimes feel so imprisoned by your just material reality. But you know that you, you almost have to go through this absolute pain barrier, like getting through the eye of a needle, so that when you're on stage, either you can have that amazing moment where you just, like, fly and you're in the zone, or really weird, bizarre things happen and you've got to cope mm -hmm. and you've got to rely on your body to kind of keep articulating. Like what, what one time what happened with, with the lights were way, way hotter than I was expecting and I could start to feel myself overheat. And so you've got to try and cool yourself down while still performing. Mm. <laughs> These are simple things that audience members don't get. So, so okay, so take back so, to the so, non-binary people. So I made the mistake. So we were yeah. doing ballet and I actually- I don't think it's a mistake. Stop calling it a mistake. It hurts when you call it a mistake. Yeah, because, because it wasn't. It was actually a bit of a sarcasm on my part in that- um, we need more sarcasm in this world. Oh, don't a bit of humour would be yes. We yeah. really do. Oh, by the by, I saw Terry Gilliam's um, Into the Woods this week. That's very good. Yes, that's it's so nice good. that they've that, that that's come back and and, yeah. has, and has and not it's been. It's a triumph. Yes, it's a triumph. I think it's beginning to happen as well. Yeah, I think so. So, so in in the ballet world, often you're separated between male and female. In my world, of the contemporary world, it's always been really democratic and egalitarian. I love doing big jumps, which are sort of seen as boys' jumps. I hate doing the little piti allegro, which is seen as girls' jumps. Like the, it is a little bit sort of stereotyped um, what boys and girls do in ballet. And I was just saying, okay, big jumps from the corner, turn around, and it was all the male cast members. And so I said, like, oh, because I thought it was being a bit rude. I said, all right, boys' jumps then. And it was just a moment of sarcasm as to why they hadn't let any, why they hadn't just mixed it up a bit. I thought it was a bit. What, so in terms of, so you, you're turning around, you're going, right, but, uh, you know, you want a big jump. Big right? jumps, sort yourself out, four but at a time. They didn't, they And they're all, all the men stand there, and, and I and I was just like, oh, okay, all right, then boys first, or something. And that was when I got sort of pulled up. Who pulled you up? Um, a a non-binary dancer. 
what, what is can we just get to the bottom of what non-binary is well I'd say that that's a bit that I still I mean you, this is this is the thing it's are like, we all not we've said already that we're all non-binary so, so it's, it's the like, problem is if you deny biological reality then I guess all bets are off so mm. for me there is there is the biological reality we, our sex is immutable, it's unchangeable, you can't change sex. Yeah. There are people with body dysmorphia who feel that the only way to alleviate their pain, mental pain, physical pain, is to undergo different hormones or surgeries or behaviours. Then I'd say there's gender stereotypes, which are perceived ways in which men and women behave because of their sex, which I guess is the thing that feminists have been fighting back for millennium. Yeah. And, 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 and for me, I've constantly thought, you know, if I were a man, what would I do? Well, I'll do, I can do what the hell I like. I'm not going to behave by certain stereotypes. So I'm all for breaking the gender norm. Which you wrote in your, in your essentially in your, cha all, your charity pitch. All like, for that, you know. all for that. But also as a woman now in my 40s, having survived sexual assault, rape and abuse and had a baby, I can say I... I wasn't attacked because of my identity. I was attacked because of my sex. I had a baby because of my sex. Mm. Much as my husband's brilliant, he didn't have a baby. No. He did something, but not have a yeah. baby. Well, if he's anything like me, he probably just had a major meltdown once he saw the baby come out <laughs> and go, what do I do with this? <laughs> yeah, we were both having meltdowns. <laughs> <laughs> so you then, and so these non, so, so it started, was it a passive start or was it was it overt? I, th I think there was an entitlement to I, this I think, uh, yeah, and what happened was, was your sort of brain goes a bit mad because you're in the studio, you're trying to make this great big full length show and no matter how much you think in your head, they, 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 them, they, them, they, 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 as soon as you start, you know, it's a spontaneous situation. You're in the studio, it's pressurized. I like to work like, wait, 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 right, it's, it's, now it's really happening and quick, 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 and then yeah. you do this and you do that, and, -la 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 -la. and, and, and you've got to be straightforward, direct, and then allow You're space. You're the choreographer. I'm a choreographer. It's like, I've been choreographed. It's quick. It's, it's also, you, you, do, you do what you're told. It's it's there is a very much a, a relationship there which is it also has a hierarchical nature there, to it which you can't avoid. You can't avoid because 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 nothing would end up on stage otherwise. Everyone would just be rolling around on the floor, you know. And so so there's lots of space where people are creative, lots of task space. But when it comes to putting it together, it's got to happen quite quick. And we've got to stay in the world of that show. I can't be coming out and in and out and in. It's like, we are these people. You are, I am with you. I can be your role. I can be Julia. I can be someone watching. This is what I've got to be nine people's brains and bodies and help communicate to that them really fast, really quickly. And then, okay, sit back, let them explore, see it, see if it works or not. And then see if it's going to work on a big, big, big stage. This isn't just for small audiences. Mm. Um, so, so the more that that would, you know, you anything that trips second, you up, yeah. start, starts to just like eat, eat away at you. And so that I think there was a sense of like, well, what, 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 what is this all about? What is it all about? What is this all about? But what is it all about? What, what, why is it, is it hyper individualism? So obviously, you know, you've, you've gone through all of the logical stages of it, which are only women can have babies. So it's distinctly two sexes and all of that. The, all of the logical, reasonable, rational, 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 is that a word? Rational. Rational. <laughs> God. Um, stuff. But there, there's a sort of, there's an element where it becomes commanding. Yes. Which yes. I find, that's the bit that always bothered me yeah. the most, was yeah. where I, I, I'm, because I'm with uh, pretty easy going when it comes totally. to stuff like, get, you like be trans live your best life ever and if, you, if, if you're if you feel incomplete involves you um changing your physical go appearance it. go for it and you know what i think in my work maybe not romeo and juliet because it was about kids in birmingham but pieces like mk ultra it's male and female they're all in skin tight illuminati cat suits everybody dances everything i mean i i i i, I I play with androgyny, I play with gender stereotypes, the body and sex stereotypes and gender roles, it's built into probably every single piece of work I've ever made. And all through history and as well. All through history and the arts, 
what you portray on stage. I love it. I've played a man on stage in a kilt and a beard. It was brilliant. My friends fancied me. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but so what was the moment that... Um... But, but I guess what's, what's really difficult and people don't quite get their heads around is that in order to play with fantasy... You have to have you a structured need to know reality. What truth is. Yeah, exactly. You need to know what truth is. Yeah. And people think, oh, you're so airy fairy and you're lovies. And yes, I do live a lot in a kind of made up world. But I need to know what the basis of that world is. And if you whip that away, I'm really scared. Mm. I'm really scared because what you're saying is everything is a performance. And I don't like that. No. I like knowing what's real when I'm on, when I'm off. Mm. You know, I'm kind of quite quiet and moody off stage, you know, but on stage, I know exactly my power, mm. exactly how to command a thousand, ten thousand people. But you don't, go, you, don't, you don't get up in the morning and perform. No. And I find that really disturbing. It's but narcissistic, it though. Is. It's hyper-narcissistic, which, yeah. is, which is strange that you would... Kids, for example, you've got a kid. How old's your kid? Eight. Eight. So I've got a 10 and a 13. And my kids like to know things yes. that are true. They really like Knowledge. it. But they're very understanding of things that are... are confusing you know so there's a few kids in one of my son's schools who are identifying as girls who are boys and the other way around and they're very understanding of it but they like to they like to understand that also that there is a an actual reality that, and a framework from which you can jump out of and be yourself do you know what I mean yeah. but this expression you the 24 hour day expression of your own you're almost projecting your own insisting on the acceptance of your own projection of yourself. Yeah, you know? and, and, and this whole conflation that it's like gay rights. Um, you that's, know, just, I, I, that's just a Trojan horse. It they is. Use minority, they tried it with Me Too, so they ruined the fact that female yeah. sexual assault, which is a massive problem. Massive epidemic problem. You know, Huge you're not fun, problem. And they've ruined that with yeah. the Me Too thing yeah. by, by going, we'll turn this into a, a place of inserting our ideology. And then they've, they've ruined race relations with um, BLM and all of this sort of stuff by telling all white people that they're racist and things like that and now they're ruining gay and lesbian people who were the, and it's every time it's a little minority group that's used as the vector to transport this very very self-centered narcissistic ideology 